Hey everybody, it's Kirsten Jordan again, and I am here today to talk to you about pricing in New York City, and that is pricing of your home when you're gonna sell it. New York City is known for having properties that are super, super expensive. That's actually true, but there is such a vast range in the prices that you'll find in New York City, even for similar square footages, that somebody coming from out of town is like, what are you talking about? Why can I get a one bedroom for a million dollars here and all of a sudden I go three or four blocks in another direction and it's two and a half million dollars. There are a lot of different ways that we qualify homes in New York City and allocate pricing to them and the reason that they trade for the values that they do. Number one is the neighborhood. We all know that location is one of the most important parts of real estate and in New York City, because everything is so dense and so compact, you can just be a few blocks away from another apartment and it can be a vastly different price because of the fact that it's so different block by block, especially in certain neighborhoods. Number two is of course, historical significance, architecture, and all the things that go together to make a property significant in the historical landscape or even in just the landscape of charm and what people expect as typical for a certain neighborhood. And then of course, there's just the quality of the product. New Yorkers really, really care about finishes. They love when everything's perfect and high-end and squeaky clean and never been lived in. And they will pay top dollar for that stuff. And they'll pay even more when they know who built it and that they stand behind what they built. So we're gonna break this down for you so you really understand how to price in New York City and why this is such an art and really not a science. One of the main things that sellers ask me when they're about to list their home is what is the way to price my home so I get multiple bids so that I'm able to stand out against other homes that are similar and attract those buyers so that they wanna make an offer on my home instead of somebody else's. Well, that actually comes down to competitively pricing your home, which is a process that takes actually a lot of analysis. You need to really understand how your home stacks up against other homes that have either recently sold, very recently in some markets, and what other homes that are actively on the market are priced for that are similar to your home. So this involves really understanding the marketplace. The other thing it involves is making sure that you're ready to price where the market is. You can't expect to be competitively priced and be overpriced. They don't exist at the same moment. So to be competitively priced means you are probably either at or below recent comps. You might be expecting a bidding war because of the fact that buyers are gonna come in and see that this is a relative value. And most likely it means that you're like a little bit out of your comfort zone for a lot of sellers. If you are competitively priced, I can promise you that in most cases, in most markets, you'll actually end up getting more than if you were to overprice your home and wait for the market to find it. So let's get into competitive market analysis and how that plays into being competitively priced. When my team does a comparative market analysis, we spend some real time understanding what's been going on in the recent market. The way we structure the analysis is that we dig into active properties, we then go into under contract properties, which means properties that are pending in other markets. The last is looking at sold properties. What we do is we break out the properties in three ways and then we start doing some real research to understand if we don't already know the answers of what's been going on with those properties, especially the ones that are active and under contract and any outliers of sold properties. This creates a real narrative so that we can explain to our sellers, hey, this is what's going on with properties that are on the market but they're not selling, which means maybe they're aspirational pricing. And then these are the homes that are actually under contract and if we can get any intel as to what that number is of where they're under contract, we can use that to guide the pricing because that's probably the most recent accurate data. And then there's what is sold. And the recent sold properties are even the best of all of them because of the fact that they show that the buyer and the seller came to a meeting of the minds and then the seller was also able to facilitate the closing and the buyer was able to close on that property. These are the three ways that we think of, an, of a comparative analysis and I would definitely encourage you to ask questions to any agent that you work with about these three categories so that you can know what the real value of your home is in this market. And now it's time to set the price. 
Once you've looked at all of these comparables and you understand where your home probably should sell, it's time to set an actual price. Now, if you are willing to price your home where it should be, the likelihood of you selling it is a lot higher and it's probably gonna sell in a shorter amount of time for a higher price. Right now, the market that we're in, which is 2023, we are no longer pricing off of 2021 pricing. We are looking at where properties should probably sell based on where they were maybe in 2019 for some homes. And in some cases, it could even be 2017 where the market was relatively down because interest rates are higher. Buyers have a little bit less buying power and they are more hesitant overall because they don't know what's gonna happen with the market. So if you are pricing now, competitive might be a little bit of a nail biter for you, but if you are ready to put it at that price, you might actually even get more than you were expecting. Now that you've picked a competitive price, it is time to focus on marketing. If you have a good agent who does multiple, multiple transactions a year, this is something you don't really have to think about because they take care of it for you. But marketing does involve how your home is positioned and how the imagery of your home will look to the market. You should have a really good agent that is able to guide you in this process. And once you've decided how you're gonna make sure that the imagery of your home is going to look great and that when a buyer walks into your home, they can visualize themselves there, you know that you have gone at least part of the way to getting the price that you're hoping for. The rest of this involves having quality photography, making sure that any sort of exterior part of your home that you can control in apartment buildings in New York, that means making sure that your lobby looks still great, making sure you're in a building where either you're timing it with scaffolding or the renovation of hallways. Then there's also making sure that there is active digital marketing that your agent's going to be doing to promote your property. On the Hurston Jordan team, we make sure that not only are we digitally marketing the property by e-blasts and by social media marketing. Marketing is something that the agent handles, but knowing what should be done with marketing is a great way to help you pick the right agent to sell your home. Oh, and you know what I almost forgot to mention? Technology is a huge part of marketing real estate these days. So in addition to the social media content that I was just telling you about and making sure that you have beautiful imagery by having real staging, or in some cases when you need to, you can use virtual staging to make that imagery a little bit more attractive. You also need to focus on having real virtual tours of homes and making sure that there's high level digital presence so that buyers that are looking online from far away, especially in a market like New York City, where we have demand from all over the world, that they can feel like they're in the home when they're there. So there's a lot of ways technology plays a part in making this possible. So make sure that you ask your agent about that because it's a big part of buyers looking online when they're looking at big cities like New York City. And if you're looking at this segment and you're thinking, hey, it's 2024, it's 2025, what is she talking about? Remember, the best real estate agents are evaluating pricing on a daily basis for your home. So it might be that when I meet you for the first time, you're like at a totally different place than if we end up listing your home three months later. And what I am constantly doing, and my agents do this on my team as well, is we are watching the comps that are going on in your building, in your neighborhood, and in the overall wider marketplace. In a lot of cases, you are pricing up until the last moment that you launch, and that's okay. Right now, we are definitely watching the market and trades to understand where properties are going to sell to make sure that we are pricing them perfectly right, right before we list them. And that's all I have to say about pricing. Really, it's about making sure that you understand pricing is truly an art and it is not a science. You need a top agent who is able to walk you through how you really should price your home and the comparable sales and what they mean to the pricing of your property. And then of course, that marketing matters. Whether it's part of the digital presence, making sure that you have staging, you need to really care about how your home looks to the marketplace and how you're getting those buyers through the door. And lastly, remembering that the market is always changing. It is always gonna be changing and there's always gonna be events that are making us think differently about how we should price our homes. So if you enjoyed this and you thought it was interesting, please like, subscribe, share, send it to all your friends. I appreciate you watching and I love having you part of my community. So let's keep in touch. And of course, send me those ideas of what else you'd like to hear about because I have so much to say about so many things all about real estate.